July the 2nd on a Wednesday, last Wednesday. And uh, they flew us from uh, Midway Airport up to Washington, D.C. And uh, they had a lot of volunteers to take care of us. The people were very efficient. And uh, the whole trip was very efficient, well organized. And uh, we seen the uh, World War II Museum and uh, the Korean one and, and Vietnam and Desert Storm, I believe. And uh, we seen the uh, Arlington Cemetery and uh, went over in uh, Virginia and seen the uh, museum of a lot of aircraft, the ones that dropped the atomic bomb on Japan. And uh, a lot of things I probably miss. We've seen the Lincoln, went into the Lincoln Center, and uh, seen uh, all, all the inside where Lincoln sits, and uh, this big place inside. And it was very, very nice and interesting. And I seen the. Uh, Vietnam Wall with my son's name on it. That's the main thing was for my trip When I was looking at that and I broke down. I didn't I tried to keep from doing it, but I did I just broke up, but But it was very good uh, that I got to see all of that and when we got back There was I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of people who was there at the airport to greet us even the Chicago Fire Department was there with their fire trucks and out saluting us, standing in the rain. <laughs> and uh, several bands there. <laughs> and a lot, a lot of people wanting to shake hands with you. And a lot of women wanting to hug me. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, it just something that I couldn't imagine happening, but it did. So I really enjoyed it. And I joined. I didn't, well, I wasn't drafted, I was joined when I was 17, about two or three days after I turned 17. And uh, I was in the Pacific the whole time I was in the Navy after I finished boot camp in six weeks. And uh, I told them right away, I said, I don't want to go to no school, I want on a ship. I seen a carrier right beside of ours get hit by plane and that thing burnt. I seen guys jumping in the water. The water was cold. Some of them are destroyer pulled up alongside of that burning ship and some of them were managed to get on the, from one ship to another walking out on a boom and jumping on the board. But I heard later that they 700 got saved and 400 died. I think there's 1100 on them carriers like I was on and uh, but we were lucky we uh, got shot at and torpedoed at and di and the planes dived at us and missed us went in the water from right straight overhead and we and I just turned out to be lucky and uh, I guess that's what it takes my son was killed in Vietnam. And they said this was a war to end all wars when I joined. But we've been in a war ever since that. Ever since World War II, we've been in wars ever since. We don't seem to be able to stay out of wars. We gotta stop this getting in wars that we don't belong in. Them people over there in the Middle East, they wanna fight one another. Well, let them fight one another. There's nothing we can do to stop it. And we're not going to change your way of thinking or nothing. So we get guys killed for nothing. Vietnam was for nothing. One of the soldiers that was on patrol in Vietnam was griping because he had to carry the grenade launcher all the time. And my son told him, I'll carry that thing. You take the rifle I got and you go out. And they got permission to switch. 
Well, they run into a trap, you know, run into a, they got a bunch of North Vietnamese, they walked right into a bunch of them. And uh, ever who was whole, walking point, I guess, didn't see them. Well, who did they shoot first? The guy that's carrying the grid, grenade launcher. Because he could launch a grenade in there and kill several of them. So they always went for the heavy stuff first. So that's how my son got killed. If he would have not volunteered to carry this grenade launcher, stuck with his rifle, he probably believed he wouldn't got killed. But well, but you can't never tell. That's just the way it happened. I don't know how you'd ever get any worse news than that. <clears throat> because when your son gets killed in a war, that you know, he even wrote a letter back and said this is a waste of time over here. But he said, you know, he's got to put in his year and then come home. So, uh, I don't know if you could say he gave his life for his country or the country took his life. That's the way I look at it. But he did follow all orders and uh, didn't try to get out of it or anything like that. He was my la he was my only son, and when he died, my my last name will die with it because I got two brothers that didn't have any sons so uh, the Whitaker name in, in, in my generation will, will die off so my wife has got a book in there I don't I don't recall just who give it to her it's way thicker than a phone book and the names are in there real small and it shows every name that was of a person, people that was killed in Vietnam. Our guys, soldiers, and sailors and everything. And it just blows you away to see how big this book is and how many, and all those names in it. And that, that was a total loss for nothing. And it's, it just seems unreal. I, I don't understand it, but I don't understand why that's got to be, but uh, evidently who's running the country up there in Washington, D.C., D.C., that's, that's what they think, but I think if they had sons that had to go into them stupid wars, they, I think we'd stay out a lot of them. That's the way I see things.